Good morning and welcome to prayer during the day on Thursday the 16th of July. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to us. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. And teach me your paths. Together we pray. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at the right hand in glory. Our psalm this morning is number 113. From the rising of the sun to its setting, let the name of the Lord be praised. Alleluia. Give praise, you servants of the Lord. O oh, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and mm -hmm. his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, that has his throne so high, yet humbles himself to behold the things of heaven and earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ashes. To set them with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a place in the house and makes her a joyful mother of children. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
From the rising of the sun to its setting, let the name of the Lord be praised. Together we pray. From the rising of the sun to its setting, we praise your name, O Lord. May your promise to raise the poor from the dust and turn the fortunes of the needy upside down be fulfilled in our time also, as it was in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 9 to 19. Jesus began to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard and leased it to tenants and went to another country for a long time. When the season came, he sent a slave to the tenants in order that they might give him his share of the produce of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. Next he sent another slave, that one also they beat and insulted and sent away empty-handed. And he sent yet a third, this one also they wounded and threw out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son, perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they discussed it among themselves and said, This is the heir. Let us kill him so that the inheritance may be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When they heard this, they said, Heaven forbid. But he looked at them and said, What then does this text mean? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. <clears throat> when the scribes and chief priests realised that he had told this parable against them. They wanted to lay hands on him at that very hour, but they feared the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reflection this morning focuses on verse 17. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. A Jewish proverb said, If the stone falls on the pot, alas for the pot. If the pot falls on the stone, alas for the pot. The proverb reflects the strength of Jesus' provocative teaching. Anyone who opposes God's chosen cornerstone will be crushed by it. In this, one of the last parables of Luke's Gospel, Jesus pulls no punches. Delivered in the midst of his debate with the religious teachers, the parable makes no attempt to veil the threat to those in authority in Jerusalem. Their rejection of Jesus and participation in his death will lead to their own death and the handing over of the vineyard to other stewards. The parable does not make for easy reading and we may well recoil from its stern themes. We read this story, however, in light of the cross and the resurrection. The stone that crushes also brings healing, redemption and new life. This parable, 
repellent though it was to the Pharisees, horrifying to the people listening, and maybe uncomfortable to us, was an invitation to change, to accept the forgiveness offered to the repentant, and to recognise God's Son as the fulfilment of his promise to Israel. God's desire is not to crush, but to restore, for the vineyard to bear fruit, not for broken pots, but for clay, jars of clay. Amen. 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 We come now to our prayers. Let us draw near to the just and merciful God and pour out our concerns for the church and for the world. Lord our God, as we join the unending cycle of prayer on our planet, turning through time and space, we rejoice in your upholding, your mercy and forgiveness. Hear our prayer today for the people and ministers of the Cale Hill and Westwell group of churches near Ashford in this diocese. The people and ministers of the Diocese of Northern Michigan of Barasal in Bangladesh and Barakpur in North India. For Christian people like ourselves seeking to live out our faith in the midst of the circumstances and the situations we face. Breathe into our small-mindedness and enable us to look with your vision and to act with your wideness of compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord our God, be present at all meetings and negotiations where feelings run high and many lives are profoundly affected by the decisions made. Guide world leaders and governments as they steer the countries of this world through this pandemic. Open up the way to real communication, which listens to needs and appreciates difficulties, so that we may live on this earth together in harmony and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, okay. Lord our God, we pray for this community the challenges it faces, the many good things that bind it together. And we pray for communities split apart by conflict or crushed by tragedy. Hear our prayer today for the staff of our schools, continuing the vital work of teaching our children and young people now approaching a time of well-earned and thoroughly deserved rest. Bless to all who live in Eastwell Meadows, Eastwell Barn Mews, Wright Close and Penderel Mews. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord our God, we pray for those who have a raw deal in this life, for those with ongoing health problems, for all who are caught up in war and deprivation. Hear our prayer for particular people we know who are in need at this time, among them Francis Sherwood, Alan Hutchinson, David Bolton, Muriel Davies, Joe Coley, Jenny Jordan, June Bennett, Jill Davis, and Amanda Chalmers. We pray for a just and realistic sharing of our resources and courage, support, and healing for all who suffer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord our God, we pray for those who have died and who now see their lives as they really are. Among them, Stamatia Lendrum, Margaret Bender, Mike Docker, Bill Stafford. We pray for your mercy upon them and thank you for their acts of goodness and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord our God, in all the events and phases of our life, we give you thanks for your steadfast and unchanging love which sustains and directs us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. We pray together the words of the Collect. O Lord our God, grant us grace to desire you with our whole heart, that so desiring we may seek and find you, and so finding may love you, and so loving may hate those sins from which you have delivered us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God grant to the world justice, truth and peace. Amen. Amen.